you know, Gregory dug this out with a shovel by himself. <laughs> and they tell me I don't work hard. <laughs> he, was a, he was a knucklehead sophomore. Yeah, yeah, yeah crazy, and right? I was at work and my wife calls me up and she said, Pond Kid is crazy. I said, he's a Pond Kid. I, said, I he, guess I was a kid. I said, what's he digging out with a shovel? <laughs> he's a strong guy. He can Back in the day. Exactly. That's I was 21 when I put this in. Jack, you are 22? Correct. So Jack is 22 and this is his first bio falls that he is hooking up right now and Ed, they, ha they have no idea how much the technology has changed I know I don't <laughs> even know what generation it is so it's fun to have everything that you can just basically follow a pattern in a system because we had to develop this on our own can't believe this pond was 30 years old it's insane <laughs> unbelievable So check this out, 30 years this has been in the ground. There's always a question and a concern about roots going through the liner. As you can see here, they do not go through it. What they're doing is they're basically going underneath everything. I mean, look at the size of some of these things. So they're coming in and they're just following the form of it all. They're looking for water, moisture. But with an impermeable barrier, they don't have access to it. So they're basically going out, spreading out and going underneath patios and things like that. And just look at that root mass over here. Ed, tell them what we're thinking about doing here. So the thought is, Jim may be coming mm -hmm. in. So I know this is your main viewing area. Yeah, exactly. So maybe, maybe cutting into here and kind of twisting that waterfall a little bit so, so it's a little bit more visible from over there. Sounds like a great idea. So we'll kind of open this up. It'll kind of give you a little bit more surface area on the pond as well. Sounds great. Awesome. Sounds we great. might not make that. the waterfall as high because we don't want to put too much soil on that. Is that a linden tree? Yes. It's so gorgeous. Yeah, isn't it pretty? It's incredible. I've never seen one branch out that See the little guy lives in there. He comes out night to the doorway <laughs> <and I. laughs> crazy yeah so it, yeah i think that's a great idea yeah so that's we'll open idea. this up i still like the I, actually the waterfall we might actually start it even further this way yeah and then have it twist and come that way sounds good so, okay i'm gonna try to take advantage of that main view very good sounds great so for 30 years this has been where you get your peace and tranquility huh every morning every single morning you know gregory dug this out with a shovel by himself <laughs> <laughs> and they tell me i don't work hard <laughs> he was a he was a knucklehead sophomore. Yep. Yeah, crazy, and right? I was at work and my wife calls me up and she said, "Pond kid is crazy. I said, He's a pond kid. I, said, I, said, I guess he, I was a kid." I said, "What's he digging it out with a shovel?" <laughs> He's a strong guy. He can Back do it. in the day, exactly. I think this is the old rickety one. I'm guessing. Yeah, I was trying to pull it out of where I have to Weird. dig it up a little bit. It's not um, budging. So this is the hole where the old bio falls was. We got the new one. We're gonna put it more like here and then we're gonna i like your idea we're gonna come here and then twist it so instead of here the waterfalls is gonna start over here and then we're gonna go in and right now we're just cleaning up the edges so this is gonna be probably 30 percent bigger than the pond just because we're cutting the edges down and making it and then i li really love the idea over here we sent jack to get a metal strip and instead of having the concrete flagstone that used to be here we're gonna actually have a really nice border of ground cover sedums and stuff to soften the edges so you don't have all that stone look there'll be stones in here here, but and we're gonna move the pond back a little bit this way because that that slope there is too much of a slope so we're gonna push back into the berm a little bit and then bring in some new topsoil I like the idea if we have time to go grab some driftwood or something driftwood for the waterfalls or the edges it'd be cool like over here you know one of those big stumps yep well a little bit later when we figure out what we're gonna do use it, yeah. <laughs> just finished reshaping the entire pond. We ended up pulling that entire edge back quite a bit. Generated a ton more soil, but I think it's gonna open up the views a lot more. One of the concerns we had was kind of the visibility of that main waterfall. We turned it a little bit harder so it could be visible from inside the home because this is kind of the main viewing area. So they have a table and chairs that they set up here as well as viewing everything from inside. We're always thinking about all those different views. So you have to remember, you're gonna spend the majority of your time inside your home. So you wanna make sure it's 
visible from those main areas. You can see all the roots that we have kind of popping up through the bottom here. That's because of this massive linden tree has been sending those roots underneath the liner for 30 plus years. Sending out all those little feeder roots, picking up nutrients and water from throughout the entire bottom of the pond. So we chopped all those things out. Will not damage the tree. It's not big enough of an impact area. We also kind of dug a little pocket out over, over in the corner for a little bit of a fish cave. So I know Greg wanted to do a fish cave over here. He just went back to the office to go grab a couple things. We started getting ready for our waterfall. We cut a little bit of a cove in there. We also cleaned up all that stuff and we made some little bit better edges. Right now, Jack is finishing up the skimmer. All right, Jack, why don't you tell us what you're doing here from in skimmer installation standpoint? So right now, I already have my skimmer set to the correct water line that we have it at. So right now we have water line set to the um, second to last screw hole right here. And right now, all I'm doing is making sure that's level front to back and side to side. Gotcha. So let's get a better view from down below over here. So point that screw out again for me. This screw right here. Got it. So when you're working with that laser transit, so what do you, so you've got a benchmark off of the pavers, right? So Correct. that's the main viewing area. Yep. Water level was down three and a half to four inches below. So that point where the screw is you're pointing at is approximately three and a half to four inches below that. Now, the other thing that we have with this skimmer model, it's adjustable, right? Yeah. So with this skimmer, we also have an adjustable faceplate and that allows us to, in case our edges are uneven and we have a low spot in the pond, we could adjust this faceplate instead of pulling out the entire skimmer and lowering it down just an inch or two. And then, as you can see back here, we also have two bulkheads in. So the one to my left is this one right here. This one has a cap on it, but normally we can put an overflow on it. To, so if the water, when it rains, the water can easily escape out of the pond instead of flooding out any of the edges. Mm -hmm. And then on this side, my right side, this bulkhead is gonna go to the biofalls. And then where Jack's sitting right now, a little bit before him is where the biofalls are gonna sit. Perfect. So what we'll do is, so you're going to finish backfilling this right now. So you're right. gonna lock it all in place so it doesn't move on us. We're then going to come in with our fabric and our underlayment. We'll start putting the rocks in, but then what we'll do is we'll come back over here. We'll start showing how that faceplate gets mounted, and then you could actually see kind of that adjustment. You yeah, know, So correct. it'll be a little bit more visual, so we'll be able to show exactly everybody how that actually works. Yep. Awesome. All right, it's looking good. So Jack is doing a tutorial and teaching the other Jack how to install the skimmer. So they did the compaction, the backfilling, setting the proper elevations earlier. Now he's showing them how to make it watertight, which obviously is very, very important because this is the interface. So remember, this is an important piece. So the skimmer is responsible for handling all leaf debris. Look at this massive linden tree over our head. This thing is going to be loaded up with leaves during certain times of the season. So all that debris is going to fall down in the pond. So if you just had a pump sitting on the bottom of the pond, circulating your waterfall, it would be okay for a while. But what happens is those leaves get saturated, they fall down to the bottom, they clog up the pump, and when the pump stops pumping properly, the leaves are just going to start to accumulate down in the bottom, they start to break down, they start to release tannic acids, they also release all the carbohydrates that have been stored through the process of photosynthesis, to actually creating the leaves themselves. So what happens is all those nutrients are released into the water, which actually causes water quality issues. So this is an important piece. So the skimmer is going to be that mechanical filter. So it's going to suck all that water and debris in to an easy catch basket. So now we have to make this interface, which is what Jack is doing right now. So this is a watertight seal that's going to be between the rubber liner and the skimmer body itself. So we want to make sure this is done properly. As you can see by Jack's actions here, he's got it dialed in. He's done this many, many times. So it's a slow, methodical process, but you want to take your time doing it because like I said, you don't want to have a problem here. So he's setting everything up and now he's going to come in. There's a series of set screws in the inside of there and that's going to create a compression joint. The silicone sealant, that stuff right there, that's going to create the watertight connection. Okay, we have the watertight connection is complete. So the face plate is on, all the screws are in place. You want to show us a little bit of how that adjustable weir opening actually works. Yeah, so normally on the older style skimmers, this is how the face plate would be. Without this part here, it would just be a fixed fixture in the skimmer box and you're not able to fluctuate it up and down. So in case those edges are a little messed up, you can take this adjustable faceplate and all you gotta do is just lower it down with these two set screws back here. And all you gotta do is just tighten these up like this. All right, loosen them up. And then 
Raise it like that. And, and we have about three inches or so of travel. Yep. So the other nice thing about working with that adjustable faceplate is you could really fine tune the water level. So three inches of adjustment, we could go up and down over in here. We could set different elevations for certain types of aquatic plants along the perimeter. We could also bring the water level up right where we want it, up next to the patio. For stepping stones and things like that, it gives you a lot of flexibility. And also, and there are, there are certain installations where we're putting in multiple skimmers. So to set two skimmers exactly the same, it can be a little bit of a challenge. With that adjustability, you could really dial it in so it's literally within a 30 second of an inch or less. I mean, it could be almost exact. That allows you that type of fine tune adjusting. So we have uh, skimmers in. Gonna get ready to trench the pipe in for our biofalls. I wanna start getting rocks in here. We do have a lot of cobblestones and stuff. I'm gonna try to use a lot of that smaller stuff over on this side. And that's because from a viewing area, we're trying to reuse as much of the stone as possible. So from this side, you're not really gonna see it. I wanna try to save some of those bigger boulders for that back edge where they're really gonna make more of a dramatic statement. So these other smaller ones here in the front, other nice thing about it is they're not sticking out too far into the water. So that's gonna give us a really big area in the bottom for those fish to swim around and also to have a deep water zone for those one or above water huh right that's close what do you mean it's close it looks like a half inch above water Perfect. yeah but i think i'm a half inch off i can't get the transit to it's like right on that knuckle so water level is actually right there a half inch higher than so what you i think just it's going to be at water level i think it's going to be should raise it up a little i think it's right 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 on it yeah stupid transition so we're it. trying to make that rock right on it a little ledge rock a little destination boulder but we don't want it to be underwater <laughs> it's like right. That's, that's water level, huh? That's water level. But that's full hot, full height. Full height, exactly. Do you want to leave it, or do you want to raise it uh, up a quarter inch? I don't know how we could raise it because it's all stable. Like okay. there's really nothing. To do. I say we leave it. This was a cattle trough when it first went in. Mm -hmm. We later came in with an old biofalls and we had the seam tape. And I was 21 when I put this in. Jack, you are 22? Correct. So Jack is 22 and this is his first biofalls that he is hooking up right now. And Ed, they, ha they have no idea how much the technology has changed. I know. <laughs> I don't even know what generation it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, starting from cattle troughs, fiberglass, poly tanks, you know, then, then we started going to rotationally mold and then started modifying and uh, yeah it's yeah. unbelievable different so, shapes and everything you name it we've done it <laughs> so it's fun to have everything that you can just basically follow a pattern in a system because we had to develop this on our own yep it's been fun can't believe this pond was 30 years old it's insane <laughs> unbelievable pretty slick huh jack back then this tree was like a sapling wasn't it it was nothing like this <laughs> it was nothing like this <laughs> The log is fantastic. And then, what a, just a natural look. And that is reusing your original waterfall cell right there. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so we've, we've repurposed it as the big, That's the big, this is gonna be a big sheet waterfalls coming right down. That's amazing. And then we'll put an underwater light there so it'll blow up from behind it. That's amazing. And then the fish can swim underneath it. And then, and then, You've made them a garage, yeah, a secret garage. hideout. <laughs> they hide out when the herons and the raccoons come. They go in the garage and yeah, hide. Yeah, we made it facing your window so, so you can actually look in and see, see them. Oh, that's great. Oh, you guys are artists. I mean, you're workers, you're tough guys, but you're artists too. Yeah, it's fun. We're having fun. That's so cool. Very cool. Now, what can I get you guys? It's been a long day. What can I get you? edge basically we put a metal edging around as much as we could in here make sure we put some adhesive as well 
and then this is going to be beautiful because remember this was flagstones when we came in here and what we're going to do is we're going to put in some beautiful sedums so it'll soften up because you got the hard patio you got the hard concrete with the uh, uh, flagstones and then now we're getting rid of that flagstone we're going to do a nice soft edge so we're just starting to fill it up we got the hose going we got the water being drained that we kept in there overnight with the fish what time is it like 5 30. Is it six o'clock? Yeah. Ah, didn't quite do it. So Jack and I are gonna come back tomorrow. We're gonna finish the retaining wall in the back, plant the plants. Plus we don't have mulch anyway, so I wanted to bring some mulch. So it was the old college try. We had to, that real, that patio kind of screwed us up. I had to go out there and get some metal bikes and some metal bars to keep that in. That threw me off about two hours away from here. And uh, we gotta get mulch anyway. So we'll come back tomorrow. Jack? Bright and early. How is it working with the boss? It's tough. <laughs> uh, it's good. Hey, I love when these young kids can hang with us old guys, right, Eddie? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so we're gonna get this thing fired up tonight, have it running all, all night, make sure there's no leaks, and then I'm gonna finish the edging tomorrow with the retaining wall. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> Fishy, fishy, fishy. This is your yeah. house. Oh, look at the fall. Yeah. Look at the water. Oh my gosh. Look at the fish. They're like so happy. Look at the fish. I can't see. End of the day. We need a little soil. Oh, yeah. We got to do that side. I haven't finished that outside yet. Nice. <laughs> oh, the waterfall is oh, amazing. You like it? Yes. I Wait till you see when it's lit up at night with the underwater light underneath there. Oh, my God. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> We're back. And it was a muddy mess because it rained last night. But the good news is the waterfall held water. So now we can finish up all of the edging. And speaking of edging, Jet, look at how beautiful that is. I went out to Midwest Ground Covers and got some sedum mixes. And this is so cool because before they had a concrete border with flagstones put in. We put in an edging strip in here, which caused a little bit of aggravation yesterday. But just imagine this whole border right here just softens up the rock. And so many times people have that ring of pearls look I think Ed and Jack. Jack, you did a great job on this edge. Kind of irregular, different size rocks, different shape rocks, and then you kind of feel dress it up with the sedum. It looks gorgeous. The fish are active as can be. And then I've got one surprise for my longtime customers I think they're gonna enjoy. Uh, I'm gonna go up front and show you in a second here, but yeah, look at how nice that is. Just a instant border with some sedum mix from Midwest Ground Covers. Looking good. And then of course, we're gonna finish the retaining wall today, put a couple of the hostas back, mulch it, and we'll be out of here what two hours jack yeah, about and it better be two hours because i'm a little tired <laughs> and then up front i drove the youtube van which i actually enjoy driving my wife refuses to be caught dead in it but i am going to bring them the surprise a beautiful tropical look at all of those blooms coming up and we're going to get even more blooms i'm going to fertilize it with some plant tabs and then this is one of the biggest problems i see when i'm out in the field vlogging is people not having enough soil because it's kind of the soil kind of i don't know where it goes i guess it gets it sinks down and gets absorbed away so i'm going to add some aquatic plant soil in here after i put the tabs in cover this with gravel and put this into the pond and they're going to get some beautiful purple lilies in a pond they didn't have lilies in before so jim you see your surprise I see a big, beautiful lily. Yep. Pretty nice, yeah. huh? I love this. I love this. The succulents in here. It, it really softens the edge, doesn't it? It does. That's awesome. And I'll just keep everybody from stepping near that. Yep. And then we're, we'll still have the entrance right there. Yeah. Yeah. And we're filling it up all the way to the top today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, finishing up the edging right now. That's what Jack is working on. And we'll yeah, be out of here in two hours. Slow down. Yeah, to one. Really fast. Yeah, you it down. I like it this way. Yeah, I do too. Hey, how was it at night with the lights? Oh, it's just so pretty. <laughs> hey, I, I come out here last night before I went to bed and Froggy is floating like this and he's just following the curtains. Go right back towards, <laughs> towards uh, the clubhouse and then he swings out. <laughs> oh, that's great. So fun. Yeah, we'll be done in two hours. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. You guys did a heck of a job.